Yeah, thank you, Bailey and Dan, for the for the kind introduction. Um, my name is Martin Schmidt. Um, I'm the business owner for Consumer Insights at Zalando, and I have the pleasure to uh, speak to you today um, about how to boost brand performance um, through insights into more than 21 million active customers. I'm not sure if um, everybody here in the audience is familiar with uh, Zalando itself. Um, so Zalando is the leading uh, online fashion platform in Europe. And of course, this is then also reflected um, in the data. So you can see one data point here, which is the more than 21 million active customers. Consumer insights is, of course, about um, understanding consumers, understanding their behavior. Now, with our topic here, actually, we gave it, let's say, a little twist, because essentially, what we mean with consumer insights here is not only to leverage this kind of insights for us personally as Zalando in order to improve our business, but actually, what we do is um, to uh, offer a dedicated B2B service to our brand partners. So essentially the fashion brands that we work with. And um, essentially um, what makes this topic a bit different to let's say classic market research um, that you might be used to is that um, essentially we can leverage this um, asset of more than um, 21 million active customers. Um, just two more words about myself. So um, my uh, background is actually in venture capital and consultancy. I did so for uh, around about six years. And after those uh, six years, I decided uh, to join Zalando. Within Zalando, I held various different positions. But essentially, one and a half years ago, I started um, building this uh, consumer insights topic. All right, what I would now like to do is um, just to show you a quick little video um, about Zalando itself since not everybody might have the, the background and I think it then helps to understand why we offer, what we offer and how we offer. When we started this company in 2008, we wanted online shopping not only to be simple, convenient and fast, we wanted it to be an experience. And guess what? It worked. Today, Zalando is the clear pure play online fashion leader in Europe. The seamless integration of technology, fashion and operations has become the unique Zalando formula. Because we never stop learning. Because we never stop starting. Our home is Berlin. Berlin in Europe. Technology is at the heart of Zalando. Every process is coded, analyzed and optimized. And that is the reason why homemade coding and developing is our favorite. Fashion is all about style, quality and choice. Zalando has established strong relationships with its brand partners and created a win-win situation for customers, brands and ourselves. To provide our customers with the best online shopping experience, we also created our self-designed private labels. The country experts at Zalando have achieved retail excellence by adjusting the proposition, the services, the payment methods, logistics and the brand portfolio for every single market. Zalando, my name is Manuel. How can I help you? Thank you, Zalando. Thank you, Zalando. Welcome to Zalando. Zalando is a good one. Localization is the international success formula of Zalando to serve every market according to its specific customer needs and habits. Zalando operations are at the forefront of innovating the customer experience in e-commerce. We are specialized in fashion fulfillment processes. This way we make sure that each parcel leaves our warehouses on time. Setting up and establishing an online high street fashion store allows Zalando to bring fashion to more than 425 million people in Europe. We never stop learning because we never stop starting. All right, 
so what we've just learned about Zalando overall is then, of course, also reflected in the data which we have available at Zalando. So we just brought some, some examples, some, some KPIs here, um, to give you an idea about the order of magnitude that we're talking about. So we already know Zalando has more than 21 million active customers, um, but for example, we also offer more than 250,000 fashion products to our customers, operate in 15 different countries, and have run about 2,000 fashion brands that we sell online. But I think one number here really sticks out, and that is essentially um, the 200 million visits which we encounter every month. And just to put this number into perspective, that actually means that um, there are around about 77 visits have happening every second. And so this actually means that our knowledge and our understanding of customers keeps growing day by day. And given this uh, magnitude of data, we think that um, this data is also somewhat representative uh, for the overall um, uh, online fashion market in Europe. But essentially, of course, our brand partners, the fashion brands, they are aware of those numbers, but they ask themselves, well, how does this translate into actually my consumers at Zalando? So who are actually the people buying my products at Zalando? And they see this overall, but they, don't really, they can't really put it into perspective for themselves. And um, the reason why they have so much difficulty in understanding their consumers is that well, where would they get the, um, this kind of data from? What they can do on the one hand, if they are mostly from the brick and mortar um, uh, industry, so essentially they have a lot of offline stores, well, they know about their sales, but it's really hard to understand the consumers, well, just because structurally information about consumers is not available that easily. What can they do? Well, they're a bit better off if they have an own e-commerce, so an own website where they sell to consumers, then they can structurally obtain the same kind of data as we can, However, one thing is missing for them, and that is sort of like the reference point. Because essentially they know about their consumers, who are mostly very loyal consumers coming to their own websites, but they can't really compare themselves um, to their competitors because they don't have this information available. And that is the reason why the fashion brands are so interested in getting access to our data. And with Consumer Insights, <clears throat> we offer exactly that. So essentially, we leverage not only the data which we have, but also the industry experts um, in our company um, to help them understand their consumers better and in order to help them boost their business and facilitate strategic marketing and also merchandising decisions. All right. What I would like to show you now just quickly is um, how this topic of uh, consumer insights as a business evolved at, uh, at Zalando. And I think the starting point for this has always been that brands kept asking us questions, right? So they asked us, can you share some more data? Um, how can I understand my consumer better? And um, we actually captured this kind of interest and discovered that this was a real pain point for them, sort of like via a classic market research approach. So essentially we ran regular surveys with our brand partners to understand what things are going well in our cooperation, but um, essentially what th kind of things are missing. And we found out that actually sharing data, getting insights about consumers, was one of the points which the fashion brands were not really satisfied with. So what we, did we do? Essentially, we ran a couple of dedicated uh, workshops with some brands to understand what are the most urgent questions that they're trying to solve. What kind of data, what kind of information are the brands looking for? What we also did was to analyze, well, how do fashion brands get access to this kind of data and information on the market so far? And essentially, we found out that there were some gaps which the brands were currently not able to fill. What we then did was essentially we based um, a design of, of uh, specific products and services um, for consumer insights on all of the questions which the brands um, asked us. We built a business model around this and um, we pitched uh, for funding with the management board at uh, Zalando. Uh, all of that within the year of uh, 2016. Fortunately for us, fortunately for me, I was successful with this pitch and um, so essentially we got the approval to go ahead with this, um, with this uh, business idea. And that's why um, at the very end of 2016, um, we then started to develop our tools and services. Um, we trialed them in the beginning of this year um, with the first brand partners. And essentially, um, we then started to really roll out those tools and services um, in summer this year. And that's also the reason why we're here today, because essentially we want to spread the message that we now launched um, this, kind of, this kind of service. Actually, uh, I jumped ahead a bit too quickly. So in case you're now wondering how do we do it exactly, 
again, we have a short little video to explain that to you. So let's go for this. This is it. We crunch the numbers. We squeeze the data. We dive deep for solutions. Welcome to Zalando's Consumer Insights. We enable you to resource our data and access leading experts to understand who your consumers really are and offer you intel to boost your brand's performance. Gone are the days of the crystal ball. In comes Consumer Insights. Your success will go through the roof, through the moon, through that undiscovered solar system. Because we have answers. How can I grow at Zalando? Easy. What's my brand awareness? And which consumer should I target? Want some coffee with those numbers? Zalando now offers the basic tool to every brand partner selling at Zalando for free. But there's more. Consumer Insights also offers a premium tool for even more access to our purchase and on-site behavior. We dig the data, analyze, and benchmark. Get inspired by insights. Desktop versus mobile. Spaniards in check. The Dutch in florals. Nordics in a frenzy over velvet? Nothing is a mystery with Consumer Insights anymore. And if you still can't get enough, we answer questions beyond the scope of our tools with our deep dive premium service. Funky workshops, individual surveys, classic research, all possible with our customized premium services. Look no further for answers. You can ask us anything. Our data rules and your business will rock. Consumer Insights by Zalando. All right, so in case this was a bit too quick, um, let me just quickly recap what we, what we saw in the video. How do we offer consumer insights to our partners? Essentially, um, our foundation is, first of all, the data of the, of the customers, which we have at Zalando, but also leveraging the industry experts who are able to make sense of the data. How we then convey this kind of information and the insights to our partners is essentially twofold. So on the one hand, we have built tools, so self-service web interfaces, um, but also services, consultancy services, in order to help the brands um, improve their performance and to help them with the strategic marketing and mer merchandising decision making. Um, if you ask me what's the difference between the tools and the services, well, tools of course is um, sort of like displaying a standardized set of data with some flexibility to, to drill down on it, um, but essentially it's a standardized set. And I would estimate that we can probably answer around about 60 to 70% of the questions which our brand partners might have with that tool. But essentially, for the remaining 30 to 40%, we just want to make sure that those questions don't remain unanswered. But essentially, we answer those questions then with um, uh, uh, consultancy services projects. What I would like to show you now is diving a bit deeper into the tool. What kind of questions do we frequently receive from our brand partners? So one common question is always, how is my brand trending versus benchmark? So I know how I'm doing, but I want to compare myself to, to my competitors. And in some cases, actually, the answer is, well, you're not doing as well as your competitors. So then, of course, the obvious question is, what makes me underperform? And then related to this, of course, well, if they do underperform and they know what the reason for this is, what can I do to close this gap? And I would like to focus on this last question now. Um, so on the next slide, what you will actually see is, behind me you will see um, uh, a quick video of the tool <clears throat> and essentially um, someone browsing through the tool. And I will quickly explain to you um, what this person is doing and essentially what kind of information this person is searching for in order to answer uh, this question, what the brand can do to, to close the gap. So what you will see in the tool is that essentially the example fashion brand that we're looking at um, is displayed in orange and a benchmark group, a peer group, is then displayed in gray. All right, let's go. So essentially what the brand can do is um, in this tool to scroll down to a demographic section where it will actually find out that most of its customers are uh, female and actually that its customers are slightly older um, than the customers of the competitors. So what the brand can now do is um, essentially to go to another section in that tool where it can set um, some filters. So for example, focusing on those female customers in a certain age group uh, in a certain country and maybe with a selected product category like knitwear in this example um, because that might be the category of interest where the brand is lacking behind. And actually what the brand can find out is that essentially it's doing worse than its competitors um, or actually it's 
doing differently than its competitors in terms of what kind of devices do the customers use in order to shop for their brand in that specific category. So for example here we can see that those brands' customers uh, mostly use tablets and desktop PCs um, and they do that uh, to a greater extent than the customers of its peers. So what can this insight, what can this information be used for? Essentially, it helps the brand to um, optimize its, its marketing strategy. Because essentially, if this is the category and the demographic group where the brand is lacking behind, then it can focus its marketing activities and advertising spend on those kind of devices, so tablets and desktop PCs, in order to make sure that it reaches um, those kind of customers. All right, coming back to this overview, so um, what I would now like to um, take you through in a bit more detail are essentially the consultancy services which we offer to our brand partners. And um, as I mentioned before, essentially um, the tool answers most of the questions, not, not all of the questions. And um, the reason for this is not only that you can only show data in a standardized way in the tool, but the reason for this is also that actually the tool and using the tool triggers additional questions for the brand partners. And that's why we want to capture and answer those questions with our, our services. So what you can see here is sort of like an overview of um, how those services projects run. So essentially what we do is, first of all, we leverage data at Zalando, so essentially um, uh, purchase and on-site behavior information, and we can actually combine it with consumer surveys. So all of this data analysis then helps us to, uh, to generate insights, which then lead to dedicated recommendations um, for specific actions for our brand partners. And this last point is very important to our brand partners because they always tell us, well, what is an insight good for if you can't really action on it, if you can't really leverage this kind of insight in order to, to improve your performance? So we pay um, specific attention to that. Now, I mentioned before that essentially um, we combine data analysis and consumer surveys. Um, so you might ask yourself, how exactly does this work? So if we look at the data analysis part, on the one hand, we have purchase data. What does purchase data mean? It's essentially, well, data about consumers who buy selected products. So coming back to the example of before, maybe the female consumers between 25 and 34 in Sweden buying kids' shoes. On-site behavior then is essentially how do the customers interact with any kind of pre uh, Zalando pres pres presence? So for example, um, how do they interact with our website without necessarily buying into products? So just to give you a specific example, there might be customers who look for, let's say, the Adidas running shoe and they put, it, uh, put articles of that type into their wish list and to their shopping cart, but actually then in the end they end up buying products from the competitor, let's say Adidas running shoes. Now how can we now combine this with consumer surveys? Essentially what we can do with the surveys is to ask the consumers about their behavior. So for example, why did you put Nike shoes into your basket, but why did you end up um, purchasing Adidas shoes? And actually, this really sort of like runs the picture for our fashion brands because we can help them understand the consumer behavior with, um, let's say, additional qualitative information via serving the customers. Um, what I brought here are essentially um, examples for, uh, again, questions which we frequently receive from, from, our, um, from our brand partners. And essentially you can cluster those kind of questions into let's say different areas of, of business where those questions come from. So a business strategy department uh, might ask us, um, what are the key growth opportunities in the market? That question is not really surprising for us because essentially they have seen that Zalano has experienced quite a tremendous growth in the past few years. And of course they want to understand how can I be part of this? How can I make sure that I uh, grow at the same speed? A marketing department might ask us, um, where do we lose uh, customers in the, on, in the user journey on Zalando? This question is especially relevant if the fashion brand manages to create awareness um, among its customers. So awareness can, for example, be described by um, customers searching for that brand on our website, filtering for that brand on our website. So essentially, the brand is on, on top of mind of the customer. But essentially, if they fail to convert the customer in the end, so the customer doesn't buy from them, then of course they wonder, where do I lose the customer in the funnel, so in the process to the actual buying, um, and what can I do in order to make sure that uh, I optimize this process so that I don't lose as many customers in this. And the last question is then, 
how can I test potential future products by getting early feedback from Zalando consumers? So this is a question that might typically be asked um, from um, a, marketing de uh, a merchandising department or a fashion product department um, from the fashion brands. And I would like to, um, let's say, spend a bit more time on this last question because I think um, this is actually an interesting use case and I wanted to show you an, uh, a specific example of how you can deal with this question and how you can try to answer it. So essentially, one approach to find out um, uh, um, essentially, well, how to test those future products would be to find out who are early adopters or trendsetters um, that early buy into the products of this um, specific brand, and essentially, where are those uh, customers being located? So essentially, what we can do here is um, our approach to this would be um, a key location analysis um, for this brand. So essentially, what we do is uh, we analyze where are those customers from, and we can actually do so in a, in a, uh, at a great level of detail, because for example, the insight can be that 95% of those customers are from urban areas, and um, they are actually mostly based in selected key cities all over Europe. And we can go even a level deeper and find out that maybe most of those trending customers can be associated with a specific area um, in a certain city. So in this example here, I think people in this room who are from Berlin, they might be familiar with Torstrasse, and uh, Torstrasse being uh, kind of famous for uh, being a hipster area in, in, uh, in Berlin. So this could be, for example, one particular area where a lot of trendsetting customers of this brand could be from. So what can this insight, this information be used for? What would be our recommendation to the fashion brand? Essentially, if the fashion brand wants to make sure that um, its, especially its trendsetting customers are being made aware of new product lines which come, become available on the market, they could consider this for their marketing strategy and make sure that they do sort of like their um, offline targeting, so essentially uh, posters or banner advertising in that specific area to make sure customers become aware of their products. And coming to, this, um, to the second example, so how the, can the brand then really test its potential future products? Um, so our approach to this would be, first of all, um, to define a target customer group. So coming back to the example before, maybe the target uh, customer group would be um, those customers being based in Berlin Torstrasse. What we can then do is to run a tailored survey with those customers. So for example, what we could do is to send those customers an email showing them an image of a potential future product. So just one example, we could ask the customer if this fashion brand uh, offered you pink camouflage dresses tomorrow, would you be interested in buying this product? And then what we can do is, if we assume that um, customers are interested in this uh, hypothetical product, um, and this product does become available, we can then track the customer behavior in order to understand whether the customers actually bought this kind of product once it became available on the market. And maybe the insight of this could be that essentially when we ask the customers, around about 35% were interested in buying such a product once it becomes available. But then actually when we track the customer behavior, we found out that it's actually only 12% of those question customers who then actually bought the product once it becomes available. So what can this insight be used for? Essentially this helps you to calculate something like a conversion rate between what customers say they would do and what they actually do in the end. And this kind of conversion rate can then be helpful in order to, um, for example, improve early forecasting and, and uh, demand planning for the fashion brand because, well, it is always costly and uh, takes a lot of time for a fashion brand to produce a new product line um, and then have it shipped to its, its stores. And uh, of course, if then sort of like the forecasting accuracy is not very good, then essentially they end up with a lot of overstock. So with this approach, they can have a safer estimate what would be potential quantities um, that the customers would buy. And so essentially it helps them then to be more efficient with their, with their planning. All right, so let's quickly recap what we just learned. Essentially, everything that we do um, at Zalando Consumer Insights is based on the questions of our brand partners. And in order to answer those questions, we leverage the data which we have, um, also the experts who are able to make sense of it, and um, the different methodologies which we have developed in tools um, in order to answer those questions. And essentially, um, the interesting part about this is that I think we found a way to uh, commercialize this kind of an approach. And um, from our point of view, this is really a great addition to the overall Zalando platform, and um, it's also a good start for us. 
in terms of our vision or our ambition, um, which would be really to become the go-to destination for, for every player in the fashion industry that's looking for data-based insights, strategies, and action recommendations. That's about it in terms of my presentation. Thank you very much for your attention, and now I'm happy to answer your questions. That was great, Martin. Thank you very much. Thank you. We'll take some questions from the room, but there's also one that had a couple of thumbs up. Do you have any plans to sell access to your data to other research companies or other suppliers? Definitely. Um, again, one of the reasons why we're here today, because essentially um, we think that the information which we provide is not only interesting or relevant to the, to the fashion brand partners at Zolando, but could be interested, interesting for any kind of player in that field or in that area. So, I mean, since we just started this summer in terms of rolling this out, um, of course, at the moment, we put most focus on rolling this out to our existing um, fashion brand partners, but it, we definitely want to expand that to, uh, for the companies who might be interested in having access to this data. So, we should be able to get going on this quite soon. And how, how do you anticipate doing that, and how could anybody get involved? Mm -hmm. Just talk to you, or? Yeah. Just get yeah. in touch with me, um, okay. and uh, yeah, then we'll take it from there. Okay, that's great, thank you. Any questions from the room? Or otherwise we've got plenty in here. Okay, that's good. Well, we'll just take one quick one and then we'll, we'll move to the next session. Uh, any plans to expand internationally, for example, to the US? So, I mean, um, let's say there's one restriction to, to this model at the moment and that is, of course, that we sort of like uh, need to make use of the data which we have so far at Zalando. And essentially Zalando is selling in the European market, so we don't have any, let's say, proprietary data, for example, for the US or for the um, Asia Pacific region. However, I think, I mean, who knows, maybe Zalando is going to expand into those regions in the future, you never know. But essentially, um, I think this could also be a potential opportunity for, for partnering um, with other companies who then have a strong presence in that area to make sure that uh, we can actually not only understand the European consumers, but actually global consumers. Great, Martin. Thank you. Thank you.